Hi, welcome to your second episode on the user experience design. I'm Rashid. I'm Samaria from Developer Relations at BlackBerry. In part one, we talked about the UX challenges for smartphones and the seven key principles of highly appealing BlackBerry 10 apps. We also got to see how some of these core apps are making use of these key principles. Today, in part two, we're going to dive deeper into the elements of the user experience design. The very first step of your app design is to define its content structure. Here, you structure and organize the information and actions in your application under the different types of menus. And you also decide on the user flow or app navigation. When it comes to app navigation, if you have multiple views to switch between, then the tab pane should be the first control to be added. You can place your tabs either directly on the action bar or keep them on the default tab overflow menu. Navigation pane is used for drilling down pages or lists and for browsing the content in those primary tabs further. You can use a navigation pane inside a tab pane, but not the other way around. That is, Cascades doesn't allow the use of tab pane inside a nav pane. If you're finding that you need to add tabs after drilling down pages, you could probably organize your content pages a little differently. If you're looking for further filtering, then you can use a segmented control. If you're looking to interrupt the user flow, then use a sheet. Note, you shouldn't be using a sheet to navigate between pages. This is the function of a navigation pane. Sheets, on the other hand, should be used whenever there is a break in the user's flow, example like taking login credentials. In BlackBerry 10, you have four main menu types. The tab menu is the one on the left and the default place for tabs of a tab pane. Action overflow menu is the one with the vertical dots on the right and the default place for page-specific actions. Only add actions to this menu that apply to the content of the current page being shown. By default, all actions and tabs will go to the corresponding overflow menus, but you can explicitly set one or the other to be placed on the action bar. The action bar, however, takes only up to four tabs or actions. The remainder will automatically go to the overflow menu. Place the frequently used or important tabs or actions directly on the action bar. For actions that you don't want the user to hit accidentally, place them on the action overflow menu instead. A good example here would be the delete action. The context menu is the menu on the right which is only exposed on a long press of items on a page. It is used to display actions specific to the selected item. This is different than the action menu even though they both appear from the right side of the screen. For context menu, only populate with action items which apply to the selected item. Make use of the multi-select action item on the context menu to allow the user to select multiple items for a group action. The app menu is the menu that animates from the top edge of the screen when the user swipes down. This is where you should put all the app-wide actions which are not used so frequently. Use the app menu for settings, help, about, info. Don't use the app menu for actions which should be easily accessible or noticed by the user. We have now come to the end of the second part of this UX design series. Subscribe to our channel and watch out for our next and final episode. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. I'm Samar. I'm Rashid. See you in our next video.